as well. That's what I keep the carabiner on my harness for because I put my climate system right to it. I'll show you why. Let me get something in the street. Nice to have two different colored ropes so you can easily see which is which when you're climbing as well. What I'll do is pull that up to where I want to go or where I intend to get off of the system. That's about how high in the tree I want to pull it. Which is right about up to the crotch. Roundabout. Then I take the end of this line, I'm going to anchor to the base. There's other systems you can use here. Um, I'll probably talk about them later on. But this idea here is to use some type of an anchor hitch. I'll just use a running bowl and with a long loop in it. Because if you're tying a bowling for life support, in every other industry, they run, they always tell you you have to back up the tail, which means so the tail can't slip out of the knot. So I'll just tie another hitch right on here, which is basically um, like a double fishing as I showed you earlier for your brucing. And then there's no way that knot's coming untied. It's something we do in rescue work all the time. You're not allowed to tie without it, having that tail backed up. I put it in a position where it's ready to work by pulling on itself, so get some of the slack out. You put it down around the base of the tree, somewhere low is nice. But put it, put it in an angle so it's ready to work as soon as you get into it, so it's tight against the loop. That'll make it not move when you start climbing. And then all I'll do is I'll come over and climb with my ascenders, clipping one on either end. And now what happens is that because I use this system where I anchor at the base, and these are both anchored in the top of the tree, if one of these ascenders comes off or breaks, I'm still anchored in a tree, so it's considered a backup. And that's where it's different than just throwing it through a crotch and foot locking up over a crotch. Because if one of those ascenders goes, you're hitting the ground. Here, um, I've created a backup. The question is, um, your weight is doubled at the point where that rope goes through the tree, and that's, that's true because I anchored at the ground. And what that means is, if anyone's not familiar with it, if I take a rope and I hang a weight from a tree, anchor at the top of the tree and hang on this rope, whatever this weight is, is what's pulling here. But if I go up and over a branch or through a pulley, then I'm holding it from down here, what happens is, is if this weight is, say, 50 pounds, and we're going to talk about this more tomorrow, you got 50 pounds of force pulling all the way through that rope down to the other end, so I need 50 pounds of pulling power here. Now, since they're in the same direction, there's 50 pounds pulling on this end and there's 50 pounds hanging on this end. That means there's 100 pounds here. And that's what I've essentially done here. The, the, the benefit you get out of this system is twofold, is that um, I get the backup of the, of the ascenders real quick and easily without adding any extra gear, which is nice and efficient. Uh, but number two, when you're using a system like this, you're not using a dynamic rope. It doesn't have to go over just one branch and down. So you can add more safety and more strength by going through multiple branches. So even if you double up the load, so to speak, uh, it's only my body weight, so I gotta know that I'm good for that. But uh, if I go through more than one branch in a certain angle, it's gonna create more strength. Does that make sense to yeah, you? Yeah, it does. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna really talk about that tomorrow with rigging because it's really important when you're using heavy weights. You know, when you start rigging out 500 pound pieces of tree, then you really need to know what you're doing. Now, I'll just keep this nice and neat, get it out of the way, because I don't like leaving my throw line laying around where it can get knocked in. Uh, because I'm pruning, I'm going to take up my handsaw with me now, but I'll fall down for my chainsaw when I get tied in. If you notice, when I set my system up, I have my friction hitch up in the top of the tree waiting for me now which to me is a benefit because as soon as I get up there, I can clip in and tie in right, right away. I don't have to pull the rope up to me or tie my knot. It's already up there weak. So all I gotta do is basically climb up there and get it. What I do first 
get into a perfectly plumb scenario so I'm not moving around a lot. Here, I'm so far away from the tree that I want to think about in advance. I'm footlocking so I don't need the tree, I'm just climbing the rope. But what I want to think about is where am I going to get off to get into my climbing system? Because it's a leaning tree, you got to be close enough to the trunk to get in a, another position to lanyard in. So here what I'll do is I'll just double check it before I go up, see what's the distance going to be. Maybe just a couple feet, I should be able just to grab it, pull it in and then lanyard in and I'm good. But it's something you want to think about on the way up. Before you're committed, you can jump on it, make sure everything's going to hold. And then once you get that shock load in place, you know that anything that was going to break, a little limb was going to let loose, you pretty much would have did it just then and there when I was on the ground. Okay. Now what I do is foot lock and I like to hold two the handles of the center and just slide myself up as I go. Just like this. I'm going to let him hit my ropes. I actually have to tie it on the foot for an You're going to bring him through? Yeah. You ready yeah. to stop? Yep. Yeah. I'm going to let it open in here. <laughs> As you're climbing, you can visually inspect the tree. All you need to as you're going up, looking for hollows, crack clips, whatever. Or you can just go right to the top. make a plan about where you're going to climb to. This is the important part. I know that I want to hit a couple points, say over here. I know I got to get a couple points down there. Maybe I got to get a couple over here. What you look for is where your lowest point's going to be. That's where you want to finish. So I start on the other side. What I mean is, let's say I want to go over and get that first then come back over to hit this and then hit the ground. That's what you want to think about. So what I'll do is come over to here. This is where I'm going to start. Land your head. You can chainsaw it, you can handsaw it, whatever works best for you. I got my handsaw here, so I'm just going to handsaw this one off. Dang clear down there. Plus with a hand saw you can use it with one hand very easily and control debris over a building and such. Dang clear. All clear. You also got another one to hit right here in front of me. Might as well get it while I'm out here. I like to be in a position where I can use my harness to hold my weight. And I'll land it in so I can use both hands to work. And I won't worry about swinging off into a pendulum and hitting the trunk. 
trunk of the tree. Get myself in a good position. And clear. All clear. Now, let's say uh, the next point I want to hit is that big piece over here. What I'm going to do is work my way back in. I'm a fan of not cutting off a lot of water spouts unless they're going to interfere with the tree, so I'll just walk around them. Keep slack out of your system and then look at where you want to go. You just want to make sure if you're going to contact the tree, Try to use more than one point so you don't get hit. Try to keep my ropes clean and free of one another. That works better for me. Now I look at that part there, and the thing to think about is what's your angle of attack to where you got to go. If I got to go higher than here, I'll go over this length. If I can go under, and reach it without going above that point, I'll do that because it's quicker. You look now, I'm not climbing above my angle of attack, I'm getting above my tie in. So I can land your in. Stay clear. Clear. do is get too, too cute with your handsaw a lot of people get hurt pretty bad with a handsaw cut especially the new handsaws are so sharp so you got to make sure you're not cutting towards your rope or towards your body just like you learn when you're using a pocket knife all right so now we're going to descend stay clear 